Okay, so we're going to start learning about networking now. This is a new unit in this course. So with networking, um, I think a, a good way to learn about this is to first visualize what we're doing. So we have a computer here and another computer here. Now, each computer has things called ports. And you can think of them as think of them as like doors to the computer. Okay? And in fact, uh, usually there's about 65,000 something I can't remember the exact number of ports on a computer. And each computer also has an IP address. Now an IP address, that stands for Internet Protocol Address. And it depends on the version of IP. So IPv4 has a, uh, a dotted quad. So that would mean that like it could be something like 192.168. This is for, let's say, local, and then 1.1. That would be a local address. So that's not an address on the internet. Um, and then, you know, this one might be 192.168.1.2. Now, these, these two computers here, therefore, would, let's say, be inside your home. Now, in terms of a public IP, how does that work? Well, I think you should understand how your uh, computers in your home work versus uh, your public IP. So in order to do that, let's draw a different diagram. So what you would have in your home would be something called a router. And your router uh, you know, would look like this. And also, by the way, it's not only your router, but most most of the times it can. It's usually also your modem. So whether you have, uh, you know, DSL or, uh, or now it's called uh, ADSL, or whether you have cable, internet connection, all these computers would. Now, it doesn't matter whether they're, you know, using Wi-Fi or whether they're using uh, an Ethernet connection and they are plugged in to your modem. Your modem is also, your router is also going to have uh, an antenna and so it can communicate with laptops that are wireless, for example, and also uh, you can plug in and this and this router modem the router by default has a switch inside so it's also got uh, a switch which will allow uh, m let's say you know multiple computers uh, to be plugged into it um, you can also by the way have a separate switch in your home and that's a dedicated switch and then have all your computers plug into that, let's say. And so in order to do that, I would simply um, plug these computers into here. And then your switch would then plug into uh, your modem router. Now, this router modem uh, is sometimes provided for you from your uh, from your internet service provider. However, it also usually has what's called a firewall in it. Now, your public IP is going to be outward facing. So this is what goes into what's called the internet. Okay? 
And this is going to be your public IP. Now, that means that all the computers that are in your home, so all this is your home. That your, that's your, when I say home, I'm referring to your, your residence. Okay, so that's, that's your home. Now, in other words, you can have multiple computers in your home, but all of them, when they go on the internet, they're going to be viewed as having one public IP. Now, this, this router, which also, like I said, has a switch, in, or you could have a separate switch, when the packets come back, you know, let's say this person here is um, watching YouTube. And um, let's say this person is playing a video game. And uh, let's say this person is uh, simply just browsing websites. Then all those packets, the, when, they, when they come back, your, your, your router knows where to send th that information to because of where the information, because where the information came from. So this is actually called, this firewall router has another name and it's called a, it's called a gateway. And uh, it does, it's called a, a NAT gateway. And the, the word NAT stands for Network Address Translation. Now what that, what that NAT gateway does, and those, like I said, usually have a built-in firewall. So in other words, let's say this IP address, I think we gave this one uh, 192.168.1.1. If this one says, you know, I want to go to this website, please return the information for this website, then that request goes through the air to the antennas, and then it goes through the NAT gateway, and it goes out on the public IP address. And so now, that website, wherever it is, somewhere on the internet, when it sees that request, it doesn't, it doesn't see that local internal IP address, it sees the public IP address. So, uh, question, how do you discover your public IP address? Well, an easy way to do that without actually going into the configuration of your router modem is simply to go to uh, a search engine, uh, like, for example, Google, and type in, what's my IP? So, you know, what is, if you type in, what is my IP into Google, it'll actually tell you what it is. And um, that, that's an easy way to do it. So, in other words, all of those computers in your home, or let's say, for example, if you're in a school and you do that from a classroom, then everybody's going to get the same IP address as their public IP. Now, when this website returns information, it returns it to this uh, public IP. So now, how, how does that information know where to go? Well, that's because this NAT gateway, which is your router, memorizes who asked for that specific information, and it then routes it to the correct uh, internal IP address. Okay? And so that information doesn't get sent back to everybody uh, inside that building. It gets sent only to the correct computer which requested it. Whether it's a website, whether it's a video game, or whether it's YouTube, doesn't matter. Okay? So, this is kind of like a real 
you know, 10,000 foot overview of what's happening. However, why am I kind of describing all this? Because some of you might, like, the, the stuff that I'm going to be teaching in this class is where two computers can communicate with each other. Now, some of you might decide to go home and say, I'd like to try this. And so now let's say, your, let's say this is your computer and you're at 192.168.1.2. This, this is your internal, that's your local IP address. And Oh, and by the way, uh, notice there's four numbers here, this dotted quad. This is an IPv4 address. Uh, usually, your internal, your internal network, well, depends on what year this is. Obviously, if you're watching this many years into the future, this may actually change. But... Um, Currently, this is still uh, IPv4. Now, in terms of your public IP, well, we're running out. Currently, it, uh, at the time of this video, this is uh, 2021, and um, we're running out of IPv4 addresses because there's only so many, and um, the world is actually in the process of converting to IPv4. Six. Now, an IPv6 address looks very different. It's much longer, and unfortunately, it's not easily, by normal humans, memorizable. So, uh, even this like IPv4 address, like a number like this, usually the um, the first three, like in your home, the one nine two one six eight one. That's usually the same for all the computers. It's usually just this last digit uh, that's different. And so that's easy to memorize. But there, there isn't a need to memorize IP addresses. You can actually assign host names to computers. So what's a host name? And also, um, we should also discuss a little bit more about host names. So when you decide to go to YouTube or any other website, usually you don't memorize an address. You don't memorize a number. You memorize the name. This is called the host name. Okay? Or, uh, well, in this case, that's a that's a, a URL or a universal resource locator. I think is what it stands for. Okay, so regarding host names, you can actually assign host names to your computers in your home. Uh, some people might use movie character names. Some people might use colors. Some people might use like the name of their dogs or you know anything. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you can actually do that uh, in your in your um, router. Now, your router. Uh, so all these computers in your home usually request they request an IP. They don't usually have a static IP set in your home. Now, where do those IP addresses get requested from? Well, it turns out that when you like regular computers that aren't pre-set up, let's say for example, like a server might have a static IP, which basically means that it's gonna have the same IP every time it turns on. Um, and there's different ways to, to have that, but what's important here is the most common situation. And that is, um, you're gonna, it's gonna request an IP, and where is it gonna request it from? Again, this is going to be requested from your router. Now, when the router receives that request, it's going to, it, it actually has a, uh, a service running on the router, and this service is called DHCP. Now, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. 
And what that does is it's responsible for handing out IP addresses. So in other words, let's say if this was your laptop that has the wireless connection. When you turn your laptop on and it connects to the network, your laptop is going to say, I need an IP address. And so therefore, your, your router is going to use, it's going, that, this is the protocol that is responsible for handing out that IP address. So now, in this case, this laptop got this address. Okay, but essentially, this guy's this this router is the control of who gets what IP address, and so what it has to make sure is that if it's handed out this address to this laptop, then it can't hand out this address to anyone else. Okay, you can't have two of the same IP addresses on the same network. That's not going to work. You'll have conflicts. All right. Now. Let's get back to uh, going on the internet and going to a specific uh, website. What you're going to type in is the URL. Now the URL is going to be a, a website address, but that's not the IP address of the website. So how do you translate that into the IP? Oops. How do you translate that into the IP? And the way that this works is with a service called DNS. Okay? That stands for domain name service. Now, the URL is going as is you're going to type in the domain name. Okay? So like for example, uh, youtube.com. Um, and your internet service provider usually provides you with a DNS service. That means that it has a dedicated computer on its network. So in other words, when you go out onto the internet, okay, the first stop, so here is your, here you're going out of your home here, where does it go? Before you get to the internet, you actually kind of have to go through your internet service provider. So maybe we um, erase this and say, listen, before we get on the internet, we need to go through our ISP, our internet service provider. And then from there, we go to the internet. OK? And part of your internet service provider's um, job well, you don't, it, you don't have to rely on them to provide you DNS, but most of them, or all of them should, and they do. Uh, however, you can choose your own uh, DNS providers, if you wish. But what is it? Essentially, it's a service that when, when you type in a domain name, as I said, like YouTube.com or any other one, um, it has to translate that into an IP address. Okay, so for example, uh, let me show you how that works. Let's go to a terminal here. And if I type in host and I type in youtube.com, now this one's actually going to be slightly different. Um, and the reason for that, so there is the IP address for YouTube, and it actually gives me some more information as well. However, I have to say something. YouTube is a humongous, well, one of the world's biggest, if not the world's biggest website. Uh, and so it's not just going to have one IP address. Now, for me, it's this. But depending on what place in the world you are, you're, you're going to get something different. Notice this is, by the way, an IPv4 address, 172. Notice it doesn't start 192. So this is YouTube. For me, where I am in the world, um, that's YouTube's IP address for me. Now notice there's also an IPv6 address. Notice I said IPv6 addresses are longer. I find the IPv6 address pretty much impossible to memorize. Uh, the IPv4 address is hard enough to memorize, but you don't have to memorize it because uh, 
by typing in host, that's a command line that actually directly accesses my, the DNS server that I'm set up to access, and it translates the, um, the, the domain name straight into the IP address. This happens all automatically in the browser when you type in uh, an address to go to. So why, why explain this much detail? And the reason is because, all right, so now comes the problem. Let's kind of start a, a new drawing here. So essentially, you might ask, okay, why do we have to learn all this stuff before we learn about how to do network programming? And the reason is, is because essentially, you want to be able to use this in a useful way. And what better way to usefully do this than to communicate with your friend. So let's say that you live here. Okay, so let's say, let's give this person names. Um, let's say this is Bill, and let's say this is Bob. And so Bill says, hey Bob, uh, do you want to play that game over the network? It, it call, you, let's say you call them up or even better, you, you, know, you message them or something like that. And you're like, yeah. So now the question becomes, how do you connect to the other person? Because the only thing that you can see about Bob, so you're on the phone, right? These two people are in their homes. And this guy says, you know, to the other guy, what's your public IP? So Bill looks up his public IP, and he has a public IP, and so does Bob. Bob also has a public I, uh, IP. But their internal computers that they're using are going to have different IPs. Other thing is, there's lots of computers in Bill's home. Uh, he might have a brother, a sister, parents, right? And Bob, same situation. So how do you connect to their... And also, if there's a firewall, that firewall is, is not going to let either person connect to the other one. So what you have to do, essentially, is you have to punch a hole through your firewall, and you have to direct that to the correct look computer. And now the way to do this is called port forwarding. Now, if you don't want to learn how to do port forwarding, that's totally fine. But essentially what you're going to be relegated to is you're going to be relegated to using only the computers you know, one computer here and one computer here, and you can have these two computers inside your home talk to each other, and that's fine. But, it, but if you want to be able to connect to a friend that lives in a different place, you're gonna have to do use port forwarding to get through uh, to them, and both people are going to have to let me see. No, I think only only one. Members. Yeah, only maybe one person who's actually doing the, has the server, uh, doing the receiving is going to have to do that. Now, in order to use port forwarding, you're going to have to um, be able to log into your router. That means you're going to have to have the password to your router. Unfortunately, many people don't even know that. Or perhaps they haven't changed it from the uh, manufacturer uh, login password that came with the device when they purchased it, or maybe perhaps when they got it from their uh, internet service provider. Essentially though, um, I will perhaps post a, a link to how to do port forwarding. Unfortunately, I can't really show you how to do port forwarding because everybody's router is going to have a different way of configuring port forwarding. But the, the concept of port forwarding is essentially if a uh, if, if this is your router so to speak then you could say if a connection comes in on the router 
to a specific port, then forward that connection, so it goes through the router to an internal specific IP address. So, and you can change the port if you wish, but you don't have to. So in other words, let's say this computer ha is 192.168.1.2, then you say if anything comes in, let's say on port, uh, let's say, um, you know, 5000, then send it to port 5000, but to this IP address. So now this this is your this is your public IP outside and when when a communication comes in on that port then it gets routed through the router and to this internal and that's called port forwarding now as i mentioned it's different for every different router manufacturer and there's a whole plethora of router manufacturers. But essentially, it requires you to log in. Now, how do you log in to your router? Well, guess what? Your router has an internal IP address, okay, facing the inside, not the public side. Here's a piece of advice from me. If you ever log in to your router, the first thing you should do is disable uh, configuration of your router through a public uh, IP okay don't yeah turn that off you don't want anyone being able to configure your router from outside your home um, and in fact sometimes I don't know but sometimes internet service providers might be able to do this but personally I don't prefer to have my router be configured from someone outside of my home um, I prefer just to be able to do that myself. So, um, what's the internal IP address? Well, usually it's the biggest one. So, if this is 192.168.1.2, this is going to be 192.168.1.254. Uh, like With Windows, you should be able to type in IP config and discover your, not only your IP address but some of the, you know your your default gateway address um, on on Linux you can type in IP ADDR show uh, also you can type in route to type to, to see uh, what your default gateway is and so you'll be able to figure out what address to type into your now wait how do you log in well that's usually through a web browser if you type in the because most routers have uh, a web service running on them so that you'd be able to log in through uh, typing in their address into a browser and then authenticate so uh, having said all this and describing how to do port forwarding uh, and if you check out the link um, I still warn you to be careful because if you you can mess things up and you can perhaps disable your internet or um, you could perhaps forget that you're you have port forwarding enabled and now you have a security hole through your firewall. So uh, if you don't really know what you're doing, I would suggest just stick to communicating with computers inside your own home. This is fun because if you have like a, a family member that you can uh, play a game with, that's still uh, a good way to test your programs.